Hi everyone, so I'm, I'm Christoph, I'm with Snowplow. So that was actually a very good presentation because it fits really well with what I was intending, intending to do. Um, so I have a bit of a sore throat, so I'm not going to talk much. Uh, I'm going to let you guys talk instead. So I want to make this um, essentially discussion on data modeling. So you all asked questions to Enemoto, so now we're going to ask everyone in the audience the same question. So um, before we start, just uh, to see who's in the audience. So Enemoto, we have Snowplow. There's a couple of people from Looker, Fishtown Analytics slash DBT. We have Shopkeep, Managed by Q, obviously Canary. Um, then, who, who am I missing? LastPass. Cool. Yeah, did I, didn't I mention Ironside? Ironside. Did I mention Managed by Q? Cool. So who else uh, did I miss? Uh, Sorry? Voyager. Voyager? Okay. Oh, Carpool Solutions, they're early in our process here, uh, recommendation as a service. Okay, cool. Anyone else? Cool. All right, so that's it. So, who here is our existing Snowplow users? Okay. Cool, so most of, uh, most of you. Um, all right, so we all know, we all enjoy having the atomic data, the event level data, it's very detailed. And then as you probably know, there needs to be a data modeling step in between having the atomic data and then consuming it because you don't, first of all, it's quite slow. Well, there's actually a couple of things. So one, an event in and of itself is not very valuable. It's only when you look at it in the aggregate, that scale, um, that becomes actually interesting, valuable. Um, now, to get the value out of there, you need to look at the events in the right context, in the right order. But doing those transformations and getting to those essentially different tables require quite complex transformations, uh, as anyone who has done data modeling. Um, for example, if you need to run a lot of window functions, it's quite slow, it's quite complex. So you need to have this data modeling step that then creates those other tables that then can be loaded um, into different tools and it can be accessed by different users in the business. For example, a product manager is a very good example. You essentially want to be in a situation where a product manager doesn't have to be technical, doesn't have to write a li single line of SQL to be able to get all the insights um, a product manager has. Or there's many different roles in the business. They have questions and you want to put them in a position where they can answer these questions um, as, they, as they arise. So that's really the, the end goal you want to you want to be in as a business where everyone can, um, if they have questions, they can just get the answer for themselves. Or if the data isn't there, they know exactly what the process is of getting the data and then modeling the data and then getting it there. Um, cool. Um, so does anyone have some, some ideas just following up on, on what we discussed with, uh, with Animoto? I have a couple of discussion topics, but does anyone have particular things they want to discuss? Yeah. Share the stuff we did with the, the session with the page things to like, grab the. Yeah, sure. Feel free. Um, so we're using Snowplow with uh, one of our clients, and uh, we had this problem that was uh, really tricky to track down. We so we're trying to use Snowplow to associate visitor attribution with purchase and do multi-touch attribution on top of it, and. Uh, one of the problems that we ran into is that we kept seeing all these self referred and uh, it didn't make sense to us, like how could somebody have originated their visit at the website? Um, and what we found was that there were, uh, there were a lot of people who were going inactive and their sessions were kind of dying and that uh, their, their tab was in the background or something like that. It stopped sending page pages because it was in the background. And so what we could do is we could identify that when that person came back, and because of their first their first event was a page ping in this new session, and we used that page ping and joined it on the URL so that we could actually join that first session to the later sessions. And so using data modeling, we were able to say, okay, that's actually one 
one session on the website instead of yeah. two distinct sessions. Yeah, so the session ID itself is just a time-based ses uh, sessionization. 30 minutes of inactivity, increase the increment the session index, generate a new session ID. Um, and that fits really well with what Lincoln said. Like you want, you want to move beyond just page views and sessions because you have examples. If a, a user could be doing five different things, could have five different goals within one visit on the website. If you, if your Amazon, a user could search for three different pro products in a single visit to the website, but the same user could also be searching for one product across five different sessions across seven different seven seven weeks in total so that's a totally different way of looking at that's almost looking at user intent what is the user trying to achieve here okay the user is trying to search for a product wants to buy a product and you want to essentially look at all those events and determine okay what is this user is now searching for a washing machine and this goes into like the washing machine session and you want to track the user from initial search then comparing different products, maybe adding to basket, removing from basket, and then all the way to purchase. Or maybe the user never gets to purchase. You want to track this whole flow. But then throughout this event, the user suddenly decides, I need a book, buys the book, and then goes back to searching for the washing machine. You want to separate those two, perhaps. So that's, uh, that's just one example, yeah? But, but how do you do that? Because it, it sounds like you have events which are disembodied. <coughs> have logical yeah. ways of navigating a site that you're anticipating. Yeah. But it's really kind of your guess unless you're watching them. I find that. Did you really go this way, this way, yeah. this way to do this? So you're kind of, I think, have some sort of assumption. And then you put like a transaction down in your context. Yeah. Around. That. You need to. If you're not careful, I think you can maybe misinterpret. Of course. Right? Yeah. Make the wrong decision that, oh, they went yeah. here, here. That means they wanted to do this. They really did. They wanted to do something. So, how do you take what humans do and then try to build this artificial transaction around a set of uh, you need those, or a screen hops? Yeah. Or page hops that you're you need those boundary events fundamentally. So, one boundary event in a traditional session, a boundary event is an event that happens after 30 minutes of inactivity. It's like the boundary between two sessions. Okay. If we look at Amazon, probably the boundary is really the initial search. That starts like I search for a washing machine and then there's events that follow from this and then you have essentially a chain of events that happen. Now it's then more difficult if the user leaves and returns to the website but at some point the user will at some point again consult a page that is related, has in a context, free use context, has the product context with the washing machine. That's probably the way you can identify those. You never you're never going to mix, there's not going to be a single event in this particular case where you have both the book context and the washing machine context, I think. Does that make sense? But it's, you have to be very careful, that's definitely true. It's also going to be very business specific. Um, so if you're a video website, if you're like Netflix, probably your um, unit of work, whatever you want to call it, is, is one of the many units of work is, is probably a person watching a movie. So the person watches 25% of a movie and then continues two weeks later. You want to track this, this whole mm -hmm. flow or whatever you want to call it. Um, so that's going to be totally different. I also yeah. end up being not be too pure about like what that like session or whatever that, that intent flow is. Like, so for us, if you were, and it's not something we do, but like, like say the user is editing a video, right? And then all of a sudden in the middle of that, we get started, we start seeing like video watching events. Uh, is that user, that tells us something really interesting, is that user going back to earlier versions of their video and just looking at them? And by allowing that sort of not clean, like part of the like, pro, you know, project uh, session into the, into the analysis, it tells us something that we wouldn't have otherwise known about, about what, the, what the user is actually doing. Are they looking at the old video because they think good or are they trying to reproduce something that they did or whatever but I think I think maybe not maybe having the idea and the boundary around it mm -hmm. not being too strict about it, like letting stuff in and out is maybe there's like a certain level of variance that we want right so that we don't are, don't get like you know follow up false follow up false you know we're yeah. not like, excluding you know what the answer to that to that we don't want to work in our, our just because you engineer yeah. you can engineer right. it right. 
it explicitly we're trying to get away from it when we went through this model. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Looking at this kind of thing, moving away from just sessions and pages, but looking at some a unit, a unit that's much more unique to a business. Have any ideas? Any aspirational ideas? Like in the case of Canary, any ideas of what you because might? We're tracking on an idea level. Yes, ours is a little less uh, drawn to sessions. We don't pay as much attention to us. It's really about um, really what people are directing. Because we have like a, a timeline, but like the, the Facebook timeline, it's generated by a, a machine being a device. It's you know, motion happens in front of it, so it's triggered. So it's really all about um, the interaction levels. So when it happens in one session or multiple, um, is now any less of a priority. It's really about how can I increase interaction on this idea. Mm -hmm. and that's why we are a little bit more simplistic than what you guys were, were been doing because. It's not, it's like in mobile apps as well, it's like multi-tab, there's a lot going on, it's a huge amount of it, it's like our app, it gets formatted and it gets back you know. So it kind of makes it a little more simplistic, when you move it to the web app, then it gets mm -hmm. Yeah. So do you, sorry, go ahead. I had a chance to experiment with it, but I thought sometimes just sort of a unifying model, we have all these like sort of events, whatever, but normalizing that all into sort of a subject, noun, verb, kind of format. And um, I don't know without that bias, but it's like always like hard to, you know, show somebody else and be like, what what is actually what's going on here? You know, like You mean the events the way the events yeah, themselves exactly. are structured? Yeah, exactly. And then and yeah. then using that as the primitive thing to build other stuff on. Because it, it makes yeah. very it's more like I think Alex has some interesting things to share there. It's like a sentence structure and then there's like extra stuff in there. Yeah, exactly. Because that's actually what we kind of are often looking at. Yeah. But but that makes me think as well, like um, so a lot of stuff happens in the room, so everyone's oh a lot of people are very comfortable with like the atomic format. Like Christoph, could you share maybe some like what are some kind of quite typical formats for, for the data in, in redshift tables after data modeling? Like what, what kind of structures do you see on a regular basis? It's yeah. It it really depends. So I do think still too many Snowplow users just try to mimic Google Analytics. And the first thing they do is create a sessions table and a page use table and so on. And it's then very easy to then start building up all your intelligence on top of those tables. But then you're not really making full use of what is possible with the, with the underlying event level data. So I think, yeah, that's my first answer. Too many users still get stuck in this traditional mindset. But the ones that do move beyond it, I think the the feature usage is a is a nice example. That's something totally different. You you might want to be studying. I do think in the in the case of a video website, I do think we have some nice examples there of people um, watching. So people watch different videos, and the player remembers where people are. So you you um, you essentially you look at the event. Okay, which video is playing, and you attach the event almost to whatever session. You can have multiple sessions that are essentially going on at the same time. So people are watching multiple movies at the same time, not at the same time literally, but they're in the process of watching the same movie. Um, but actually a nice example is um, we work with a travel website in, in Germany and it's a very, it's like the website, I want to go from New York to Philly, well it's from Brussels to London and this and this date. Um, and what they fundamentally aggregate to is the search. So they're essentially turning the events and then squashing it down into a single row and then adding a lot of columns. Um, and they fully track what people are searching for, where they're coming from initially, and then how deep they go into the funnel. And then at the end, they get an affiliate late signal back whether the user actually purchased or not. Um, but one of the once they got this data, um, they, the BD team was very, very quickly could determine, okay, what are the top routes people are searching for and we don't have any good results? What are the top routes we don't have bus results for, train results, plane results, whatever? And they could just rank them by essentially revenue opportunity that you're missing out on. So that's a, that's a nice example. And it's, it's different because, um, it's different from a session because you find that users 
do search many times in a single single visit um, and then they can use this information to segment users so you have a certain type of users um, that um, you have different types of users like um, there's users that um, have a specific week they want to travel in but they haven't decided on the location yet so for example it's students they have one week of holiday and they don't really care where they want to go they just is this week if other people who want to go to a certain destination but they haven't decided on the dates yet so those are very different segments you have business travelers are very different you have families with little kids they're very different you have people going on skiing holidays you have all these different types of segments and you can use the behavior um, but how people search to then segment those different users. A totally different example is actually um, uh, a website that um, works as an insurance broker. Um, and they do actually some very nice event tracking with Snowplow. So people have a big search box. I'm, I'm an SM, a small business and I want insurance for, and then you type in what you want insurance for. And they actually type every, they track every single keystroke because they realize that they're showing the results dynamically. But people are searching for things and if they don't see the results showing up, they just delete and, and they, read, they change what they search for until the result is there with the one they're actually searching for. Um, but people can be typing and deleting and you don't know what they're typing and deleting so you don't know what they're not seeing in terms of results so then they started tracking every single keystroke as an event and then they have a nice python udf that they use to then aggregate this and they can essentially see what people are typing for and not finding so for example they've quickly found in late october people are searching for santa claus insurance and there's no such thing as santa claus insurance but it's people dressing up as santa claus and they want some kind of insurance for them as a it's it's a contractor it's a real story um, so then they went to the insurance companies look we have this we have x hundred people searching for this there's no product can you create a product and there's x amount of potential revenue here so that's a very nice example of how they they use this data um, to get some some real value there's many more examples this is just a very very fun one um, yeah, on top of the different uh, travel points, um, it seems like the kind of thing that you might want to plug into a machine learning model to, to develop. Do you see people doing that? Uh, yeah. Taking your data, feeding it into a model, and then putting it back into a redshift? Yeah, we. Um we have, we have, for example, a mobile games company in, in London that is using us. And they use the data um, for the acquisition through Facebook and Instagram. So within a couple, they, they're constantly running 20 plus campaigns on both Instagram and Facebook. And they know within a couple of hours, they use everything from the retention and churn curves and so on. They know exactly within a couple of hours, they can predict how well a campaign is going to perform long term. Or not so they know they're trying constantly new campaigns and within a couple of hours they know this campaign is working or this campaign isn't just based on the lifetime value of of the uh, <coughs> of the, the the segment of the the user the users they're getting through the the campaign so it's a nice example because they use some some advanced models that they're running on top of the snowplow data and then they're actioning these models on the, the campaigns they're running so that's a nice example um, it's probably more um, yeah. Um, anything else? Some people want to discuss. Um, cool. Right. Thank right. You so that's it.